Hey everyone, I've recently been working on making an upgraded version of Generation Land, my fully AI and dynamically generated video game. And as I've been going along, I've been sort of upgrading some components. And one of those components is my interactions with ChatGPT. And I wanted to sort of go over what I've been able to do and also how to, how to do it. So hopping right into it, what is the end goal? Well, I want to have ChatGPT fill out forms for game components. You can see some examples on the right for enemy sheets for the, the player to fight. And they must follow them as best as possible because these things are not being cherry picked by humans. They're running in the background with no human intervention. And a lot of these, a human won't even see them. They'll see the products of a result of these sheets. It needs to be able to describe things that will be fed into stable diffusion. So this is what's you know driving the sprite generation. And there's also these choices that hook into game components. So for instance, the attack style in the example to the right, uh, it has to choose between melee and range. And this will determine the classical AI for controlling the enemies of, you know, does it attack with a melee attack or a ranged attack? And it's very important that ChatGPT follow that exactly simply because those choices are hard coded into the into the game. And if it chooses something outside of these choices, then the the game engine and the game doesn't understand how to interpret that. So let's start off with the first component of my prompt, and that is priming. So I give the AI a very high level overview of why we're doing what we're about to do. I get a little backstory. And then I hop straight into what's called these describe calls. And anywhere where I put this describe with the open close parenthesis, I'm telling it I want the physical attributes to be described. And this is what's used for stable diffusion. And if you notice, these mimic function calls in programming. And this is a theme that's going to pop up a lot during my prompting with ChatGPT because ChatGPT actually is trained in some way underlying on a code base, which is why ChatGPT is able to program. So moving on, we have choices. And this is how I do it with the choices equals and then what looks like a Python list. So again, we're mimicking this programming style. It understands, you know, with the name and this list, these are options. And we also describe, hey, I want you to choose from these options. And these are the game hooks, like the ranged and melee that hook into the engine. I then start to show it with a positive example. So I go and I give a design sheet for a fruit that has a name, a description, and a taste. So we're using both just a, a normal one where I can choose anything. We have a describe where we want lots of detail, and then we have a choice. And then I have it provide a good example of what this would look like. And the other thing is, you might notice this fruits is not with my high fantasy stuff. And originally I did use actual examples from what I wanted it to do. So for instance, I would show it a character sheet for a wolf or a skeleton, but there was two main issues with this. One is that it would bias the AI. And so if I gave it a wolf and skeleton example, I would get a decent amount of wolves and skeletons in my output. So it would end up copying. And even if you told it not to copy your stuff, it still would end up copying and more than not. And then the other issue was that you would have to make lots of examples. You would want a lot of examples that were varied, and then you would have to make examples for every single form sheet that you that you wanted to create. So not only was it more work to put in, but then it also would be lower quality results because of that biasing. So I went for something completely random and off the wall. So fruits in this case, just to give an idea, but it wouldn't bias it. And I could reuse this for every single uh, design sheet that I wanted. And I then went through and showed it some negative examples. So in the first one, I showed it that not only showed it a bad example, but explained why this is bad because the description is both too short and doesn't describe a lemon in this case. And then example three also shows another bad example because it ended up choosing a taste that wasn't in the choices list. And, you know, we, we explain this all to hopefully get better results at the end. And then at the very end, we have the final form prompt. And you can see I've, you know, created these choices for different sizes for mobs. I have the describe to create the sprite and then the attack style of melee and ranged. And the results of this were 
we're pretty good. Uh, so, you know, it does all of what we ask it to. It sticks to the attack style, it sticks to the sizes, and the descriptions are pretty good. But there's some, some shortcomings from what I needed to do for my upgraded version of the game. I wanted a little bit more. So one of those is that there's no way to ask for different things based on previous choices. So if you notice these from the original uh, screen, these examples that I showed, if we have an attack style of melee, I also wanted an attack type that has a weapon swing or a weapon uh, strike and then a description of the weapon itself. But if it was a range, I wanted a projectile type and then a description of the projectile. So based on the choice of attack style, whether it's melee or ranged, I wanted different things to be filled out. So the solution, once again, with the programming inspiration is to use if else blocks. So I describe it and put it into the original prompt that in this case, with the choices of sneakers or sandals, you can uh, choose also a brand, and your brand choices are based on whether you chose sneakers or sandals, and then I explain it all. And then we also want to update our example to now include this, so we can see that we added in whether it was sweet or sour, we have sugary and honeyed, or acidic and tart. And then we also update and add the negative examples. So with example three, this is the one we had before, we also add into here that when it didn't choose a taste from the correct list, that it also breaks the conditional option below it. And then with example four, we have it where it picks one from the wrong category and we explain that while kick acidic is a valid option, it should only be picked when the taste is sour, not sweet. So this is you know another negative example to stray it away from doing bad things. And so this is what the final prompt looks like. Uh, it gets a little bit complicated, but in the end, it ends up filling out these forms pretty much exactly the way I wanted it to. Uh, but there was one last thing that I wanted to play around with, and that was size distributions. So for the upgraded version of the game, I'm going to be incorporating levels. You'll go from level 1 to 10, and the quests that you'll take on will also go from level 1 to 10. And the thing is, is that the lower level quests will have smaller mobs and the higher level quests will have larger mobs. And I wanted ChatGPT to create this distribution. And I tried it, I tried telling it this idea and telling it for what kind of level I wanted the quest to be made, but it didn't quite work. It wasn't following the distribution quite as well as I hoped for it to. But at the end of the day, if the problem looks like a nail, you just got to use a hammer. And so I was doing it just manually. Uh, I'm having Python follow my distributions or calculate the, just the choices based on some distribution. And then I can get the exact kind of distribution I want instead of trying to ask ChatGPT to simulate these distributions. And one last tiny thing that I also did that you might have noticed some of my example results is I ended up switching the order of size and name and this is something I call response ordering because previous responses informs new responses with these kinds of language models so you want your most important choices to come first so the, the choices that all the other decisions stem from because you don't want it to choose a name and then go oh wait I actually need this to be a small animal like chat GPT is fairly good at handling these kinds of things, but you just want to minimize the uh, room for error in this model, especially when you're dealing with this one-shot nature where things have to work the first time. So thank you all for watching. I have been uploading the supplemental code and some of these you know, final prompting things to my GitHub, which will be linked in the description. And if you enjoyed the video and want to uh, be kept up to date, with my progress and some more tutorials, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.